In this tutorial, we're gonna be breaking down one of my favorite things to work with, textures. The best thing about this tutorial is you will be able to retry these things at home inexpensively. I want to give you guys tons of options. If you're not familiar with me, I'm a huge option fan, as well as knowing not everybody has access to the same things. So hopefully some of these budget friendly pieces you can come across and they will help you along your DIY journey. I will tell you another item that people will use to create a texture is sand. I don't muck with that stuff, so I'm not gonna be using that today. For the demonstration purposes, we're gonna use one paint the entire video. This way you can see what this looks like originally with nothing done to it, and then how each different effect changes the consistency of this paint. Also, please keep in mind that because it's chalk, it's already a little bit thicker than if you're using a multi-surface paint as your original paint and then mixing things as you go. A lot of these ideas will help you. You can even turn this into a chalk paint depending on what you're mixing in with it. It was really important to me to make sure you know at home that you can pick up these items from Walmart. Now I know Waverly has been discontinued in certain areas and certain Walmarts, so people have told me. I don't necessarily know because I haven't went to all the Walmarts, but my local Walmarts still carrying Waverly as you can see they are really well stocked they are extremely inexpensive and they also have the folk art paints there as well if you do not have access to Waverly and you would rather use one of your artesian paint that's what I call this and Dixie Belle like all the fancy paints I call them artesian paints not sure what you guys refer to them as but you can also use these ideas with this type of paint as well. I just personally wanted to keep this video as controlled as possible so that way you at home have access to the things that I'm sharing and don't feel like you're limited because you can't afford this paint or you don't have access to a retailer that has this paint. And in case you don't, my girl Sammy over at Unicorn Dust Design sells this paint. Her link's down in the description box. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm also going to show you how to make your own DIY texture paste. If you don't want to make your own texture paste, I love to share this stuff. It is non-toxic. It's by Tim Holtz, and I do have an Amazon affiliate link down in the description box. If you ever hear me talking about the description box, I've noticed that it's changed up a little bit on YouTube. There is now a more button underneath this video. If you're watching on your phone, if you click that more button, it's going to open up and you will see a bunch of links down there. If you open up the Amazon affiliate link, I usually have a little store shop thing in there with different stuff that I use throughout my videos. You can find this down in there. And I just want to pop in real quick and let you know that these tutorials are meant to be long winded. They are not for everyone. You could be sitting there right now thinking, Oh, Brady, you're talking too loud. Then that probably means I'm referring to you. I have a large audience that likes to stop by my channel and learn things as well as the who, what, whys, whens, and wheres of what I do, what I use, and the reasons behind all of that. These tutorials break them down while I talk and craft at the same time sharing my personal experience and what I do think is or isn't the best thing. If that's not for you, I'm sorry. I have a ton of other content that you can check out Links are down in the description box below. For the demonstration purposes in this video, we're gonna use glass instead of wood or a canvas or anything like that. And the reason being is I personally feel like you can see the results of texture on glass or even if you have a lamp, you, that ha you know what I'm saying? Like how lamps have the curvishness going on and some of them have with the glass. You can see the results of texture really, really well on those items. I want you guys to be able to really see the visuals in this so you get a better idea at home of what might work best for you. I purchased a bunch of these from Walmart. They are a little bit over a $1.25 price point. And you might be asking yourself, Brandy, why did you go with these? Because they're small, my friends, they are small. It's not gonna take me a long time to paint these up. 
And I also appreciate how large they are at the same time. So this way it's not something just this big. And that's really all you have to go off of to get a good decision at home about what you think is going to work best for you. I also got a brand new paint. So this way you can see me open it. And you know at home that I didn't do anything to this paint or add anything to it. Just to start off. Oh my gosh, I might need to pause it just to get this open. Oh. I I literally just did my nails and I am not trying to. <laughs> the other day I was filming and if you're in my community group over at on Facebook, I have a little TDS community group and I share a lot of behind the scenes stuff. I literally split this nail right down the center. And I I'm only talking about that because you guys probably don't know at home, but people have said some stuff about my nails recently, so I'm trying to make them pretty. But look, aren't we glad we painted them? Gonna just pour a little bit of this on our plastic here, and then we are going to... Ah! Too much. And we're gonna apply it right on our glass. And just so I'm being correct here, I want to advise everyone at home before you paint, before you transfer, before you do anything with your glass DIYs, it's important to make sure you clean them all off, however works best for you. I'm not cleaning them off just because I'm saving time here. <laughs> And I'm going to use a pouncer. It's one of my favorite things to apply my first coat, at least of paint, on a glass. If you don't have a pouncer, feel free to take a little sponge, cut it up, and you can also tap -ity tap 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 that sucker right on the glass and get a nice coverage. And even a coral sponge will give you a nice coat. And in case you're wondering, like, Brandy, why the first coat? Because if you do a paintbrush, hold on a second, let me find one. If you do a paintbrush, okay, you're going to get streaks. It's going to go like this. See that? And then take the pouncer. You don't have streaks, you have more of a solid coverage. Now, yes, this is smoother. I know what you're saying, Brandy, there's more of a texture in this, this smooth, that's fine. For those of you that absolutely do not wanna deal with this, use your paintbrush, okay? You'll get a nice smooth appearance. What I like to do is allow this layer to dry and then I'll come back in to get that smooth appearance with the paintbrush. And there is no right or wrong re way, not reason, no right or wrong way to go about this, okay? It is absolutely what works best for you. I'm letting you know that in my experience, it is quicker for me. And if you ain't worried about time, then don't even, you guys aren't pushing out content and making projects like I am for you at home. So for me, time is money. So I am always wondering how long it's going to take me, how much time do I have allocated for that. And yes, on a side note, other than just make content, I'm running a business, I have kids, I have all that going on. So for me, it is extremely important to do just what works best for me with time and I still get a nice, beautiful look. another little pile and mix some baking soda in with this one. Here's the million dollar question that I'm going to see in the comments. How much Brandy? How much baking soda? How much car <laughs> calcium carbonate? How much spackling? Listen, I must say what I say in every video that I make. Mix with love. <laughs> with love and the reason I say that is because creating a texture is absolutely up to the consistency of what you are trying to attain when you're DIYing something if you do not want a heavy texture then you don't want to add a whole lot but if you want thick then you're going to add a decent amount 
and so you can get up on this joint with me. That's about a tablespoon of baking soda and a tablespoon of paint if I'm just eyeballing that up and winging it off the top of my head, right? So we're just going to mix this up and you're going to see how absolutely thick that this is going to be. Here is the regular paint. Here it is with the baking soda. Okay. Now I'm going to do some calcium carbonate. I grabbed this off Amazon. I also think this is linked down in my description box. I'm going to, for the sake of the video, try and measure everything, not exactly evenly, but to what my eye looks like, that looks like it's even, <laughs> and go from there. I think that's about a tablespoon, and ah, I just hit the glass. Hold still. All right. All right, there we go. Um, and then we're just going to mix this up so you can see the difference between the two. I personally, and then I'm going to show you what my favorite mix is of these, okay? See, you notice this is more like a flour consistency. That reminds me more of a salt, if that makes sense, okay? This reminds me a little bit more of flour. And you're going to notice it's going to be slightly fluffier. Not like, like this is kind of got a grittiness. This is going to be fluffy. Calcium carbonate. Let's do the baking soda first. Now the calcium carbonate. Now that we have the controlled piece, baking soda, and the calcium carbonate out of the way, I like mixing both the baking soda and the calcium carbonate together for a textured look. I definitely feel like it gives an overall thicker, heavier, buttery type consistency than just using one or the other whenever I'm trying to create a very nice textured paint on a piece. Grabbing a new glass bottle and smooshing some of our new mixture of both. Look how thick that stuff is <laughs> so thick. All right, here we go. I want to talk about the elephant in the room real quick. There has been several times in my comments over the past couple years where people say that they use caulk for texture. Let me tell you why this is a bad idea to mix in with paint. If you're doing it as just like you're laying it over a stencil piece and you're keeping it for your own home decor and things like that, that's fine. Or if you're using this as, let's say, faux icing or to create some faux look with like desserts, that's also fine. But if you want to mix this in with a paint and apply it to your furniture of any kind, if you're refinishing furniture, if you're upcycling certain things, that is certainly not the best idea because this stuff dries rubbery. If you walk into your house and wherever you have yourself some trim and there is caulk there, you can literally, sorry, the camera, you can literally take your nail and press it into the caulk. It is rubbery. Even around your shower, if it's caulked, you can take your finger, press it in there. It is rubbery. You really, really want 
to be able whenever you paint anything or you apply a texture in here, you want to be able to take at least a 200 grit sandpaper at any point, especially if it's furniture, and sand it down. You're not going to be able to do that with this. I mean, sure, you can try it, but it's been my experience that you're going to have chunks of this kind of flake out and completely peel off your piece and then you will have sections without paint. So please keep that in mind whenever you're creating a texture. And for those of you that have made comments in my comments about taking this, they use this for texture and all this stuff, that is fine if that's what works for you, but I do not recommend it, especially from a beginner standpoint. You can be mixing this stuff together, thinking you're doing the right thing and getting frustrated because the results don't make sense. Spackling, however, my friends, is completely different than caulking. So please keep that in mind. This is absolutely meant to harden. And this stuff is going to, depending on what you get, there might be tiny minuscule cracks, especially if you're doing it as a whole sheet of something. But this is awesome on furniture pieces. If you take just a little bit, and you mix it with some calcium carbonate. I have absolutely done this many times, adding different looks onto furniture, and this stuff sands down really well. It also holds up amazingly if you're going to add on a finish and everything cures. This stuff is phenomenal. And I can't even get this open. I purchased this at Walmart in case anybody is interested and needed to grab some more spackling. And there are other types of stuff that you can grab. Absolutely. This is just one that I have used. I am not a huge fan of the one at Dollar Tree. So I know a lot of people get that one, but that stuff is really dry. You got to usually add water to it in order to get it to function properly. And that can be frustrating for me. So I'd rather grab this stuff. I finally got it. I saved all the cussing for off camera, so I ain't gonna hear nobody in <laughs> my comments talk about my language. Um, this stuff is buttery, right? Look how buttery this stuff is. Ooh. So it's literally just fabulous all on its own. You wanna mix it in with some paint, which I like doing that. So we're actually gonna take some of this spackling, nice old little chunk. And we're going to mix it in with the calcium carbonate we already got going on over here and the baking soda. This right here is my favorite mixture to apply on to a furniture piece when you're adding some texture. I also love the way this looks with glass as well. It just goes over so smoothly and I love the combination. I also want to tell you that it might be a good idea if you're not, you know, in an outdoor setting that you might want to make sure you have some PPE on. It's not like the best thing to be breathing indoors, okay? I'm going to do the same thing here. Just grab my little pounce or pounce and get the tappity tap tap. Look at that. Oh my God. It's so, look at that. I, lo I love that so much. Just like to give y'all, like you could, it's so fabulous. You can just paint it on with the pouncer and it's just like, it's, you don't even have to pounce it. Look at that. It's unbelievable. It is absolutely my favorite. I'm telling y'all, I've been doing this for a, a hot minute <laughs> and it is by far my favorite mix to create a texture. It's, it's just, it's fabulous. While everything is drying, we're going to move on to the texture paste part. Now I'm going to use spackling. Okay. Cause you can use this for texture paste. And then we're going to mix up our own little mixture right here. I wanted to use a stencil that you could all purchase at home that had easy access to it and inexpensive. This is from Walmart as well. And the brand is called Hello Hobby. And we're going to just use this for our demonstration. Make sure you tape your stencil down and all the things. 
And this stuff is great, especially if you're, ah, <laughs> my bad. This stuff's fabulous as I throw the lid across the room. This stuff's great to create a raised texture look and it's easy to get a hold of. You don't have to really order off anywhere. You pick this up at the store. So you can just take it and it also sands down well. And you can just plop it right on overneath, overneath, overneath your stencil. This is what happens when I do these tutorials to start getting tongue tied as I'm trying to explain everything. Sorry, you're not here because I'm politically correct, are you? So we're going to just, you know, buttery smooth. And you can do this as thick as you want. I'll lay it on here kind of decent. Do, 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 do. All right, ready? Look at that. Pretty awesome, right? Now, keep in mind, this isn't necessarily the most non-toxic and, you know, breathe-friendly way. That's why I like using this stuff. But let's mix up our own real quick, and it will be slightly healthier for us. You're going to need a container. Obviously, I'm doing this for the sake of the video, and I'm just going to use this little lid right here you get yourself a nice little container so this way you have something to mix everything up well and i'm going to use tacky glue feel free to use elmer's glue or whatever kind of glue you have on hand i know that this stuff is going to give me an absolute hold with this stuff and it's non-toxic so i always try to strive for things that are non-toxic we're going to need to put a nice healthy amount in here. Add a smoosh of water. Hold on a sec. Ah! <laughs> Seriously. I know y'all tune in and you're like, I can't believe I'm here for this tutorial because she is a hot mess. A smoosh of water is all we need. We don't need a whole lot. And you can always add more. Okay. So you can always add more. Just the smoosh because that tacky glue is thick. And then I'm going to do a combination, okay, of our calcium carbonate and the baking soda. And I'm going to just kind of mix, I'm going to say about a tablespoon of each to a tablespoon of glue and what was that about a teaspoon of water for those of you that are at home like brandy i need measurements that's my eyeball <laughs> that's my eyeball measurement for you here comes the baking soda can i even reach down in there did i get it oh my gosh it's so thin it's not it's so funny whenever i'm scooping this stuff because I get used to the consistency of the calcium carbonate because it's fluffy and this stuff is not fluffy like that. So yeah, we need about a tablespoon of this. Now we're going to just mix this stuff up. And obviously I'm going to try to not get it all over the place. And it's going to take me a minute, so bear with me. Keep in mind, this stuff is going to be pretty thick and you can absolutely mix in colors with it. If you want, add some acrylic paint and you can store it. It should store fine. I have never done that, to be honest with you. If you put this in like an air tight container, you should be all right. Uh, don't quote me on it. <laughs> I usually make what I'm going to use and then that's kind of it. Now I'm going to take my little stencil, plop it right in the center here, and we're going to do the same thing we did with the other paste and mix as much or as little as this extra if you feel like you need to. You don't have to. It is entirely up to you. Spread it on your stencil. Like I said, this stuff is thick. And I'll make it kind of raised on here so you guys can see and there we go 
Look at that. Super pretty, comes out really nice, and just let it dry. It shouldn't take too long. But just because I am absolutely this person, I'm going to mix paint in. <laughs> just in case somebody in the comments somewhere misses that I said you can mix paint in with it, and they ask, can you add paint? Here, adding paint, mix it on in turning look how pretty that is and again you can do the same exact thing with the spackling too you can take a little bit of the spackling put it off to the side and then mix it with just i think i overdid it with the paint i think i put too much in here but it's coming across we're gonna pop another little stencil right on here and then we'll let these dry and i'll show you what everything looks like because we are ready for the reveal here are the final results. Over here on the end is just the paint. We have the baking soda, calcium carbonate, the mix of both of them, and this one on the end is the mix and then add some spackling. I'm gonna get a couple close-ups here. The paint itself, it even levels itself out using a pouncer. This is just one application. I did one application on each one of these. Here's the baking soda. See how I said it's like a salt type. It's very gritty. The calcium carbonate is very fluffy. This one I think always turns out so cool when you're mixing both of them because you got a little bit of that gritty texture plus the fluffiness. But the spackling mixed in with them, it's always so amazing. Let me know in the comments below if you guys are thinking about trying any of these or if you have a favorite already that you've been working with that you love. Here's our spackling for a DIY texture paste. And here is our own homemade DIY texture paste. This stuff is beautiful. It's nice and raised and it dries super pretty. As always, people, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. I hope all this information I had to share on textures helps you along your DIY journey. And until next time, bye.